Hello, my name is Sandy Ingleby and I'm the collection manager here at the uh, Australian Museum's Mammal Section. The mammal collection uh, at the museum consists of around 47,000 specimens at the moment. It dates back to the middle of the 1860s and it's still growing at a rate of around 700 new specimens every year. It's a fantastic uh, resource for both research, for educational purposes and also as a safe place for historically important specimens such as extinct species and also type specimens. People often wonder why we have so many specimens and why we still collect specimens and why we accumulate them over time. Basically the, the collection is used for research and the more specimens you have from a particular species the more projects that you can actually use those specimens for. And also, if you just look at the cabinet here, you can see that there's a huge variation in what the specimens look like. So having a series throughout time and also a number of different animals of different ages, different sexes and so on, allows you to get a full understanding of, of what one species is and where another one starts, if you like, and also looking at the changes through time. Um, for instance, these, these specimens represent a particular population at a particular point in time and we can use that to make management decisions in future about how that population is going. Another very important um, use of a collection like this one is as a safe place for historically important specimens and the two most important specimens if you like are what we call um, extinct specimens and also type specimens. And a type specimen is basically the standard for a species, so it was the specimen or group of specimens that a scientist used when they were describing that species for the first time. So this is an example of, of a type specimen. It's a subspecies of Goodfellow's tree kangaroo. The common name is the golden mantled tree kangaroo. And it was described by the research scientist here at the Australian Museum uh, in 1993. And this is the specimen used in the original description of that subspecies. Uh, the composition of the collection has changed a lot throughout time as well. In the early days of the museum we were focused on collecting exotic species for display in the public galleries, things like lions and gorillas and so on. But these days we're much more focused on acquiring specimens or developing our content of fauna from the region, from the Australian Pacific region, because that's where we can make the most uh, impact in terms of conservation management of these species and this forms an important resource for researchers studying those particular groups. If we didn't have collections such as this one it would be much more difficult to understand where a species occurred to get an idea of its past distribution and also other various aspects of its ecology. Uh, the, the, the specimens themselves are almost like a permanent record or the hard evidence if you like of where a species was at a particular time and the genetic composition of that population at that time. All these specimens have detailed data associated with them and it's this data that enables us to provide input to management programs for endangered species and without a collection such as this one um, we'd be in a much more difficult position to make those sort of decisions. With changes in technology these specimens have become a really valuable resource uh, even in terms of being able to extract the genetic material from those specimens. So when they would have been collected, nobody was uh, aware of DNA technology. And so who knows what, what possible uses the specimens could be put to in future.